freedom was also the goal of black and white indentured servants in Chesapeake tobacco country. Since the early 1600s, black people had trickled into the area. Most were enslaved, others indentured servants. A few were free. John Punch was a black indentured servant. James Gregory, a Scotsman, and Victor, from the Netherlands, served with him on a small tobacco farm. In the New World, every European colony needed to provide a profit. In the Chesapeake Bay, Virginia, Maryland, the more tobacco you could plant, the more profits you could reap, uh, the more pleased the investors back in England would be. And there is tremendous pressure for labor. They hoped to use Native Americans that they found in Virginia as a labor supply. They were disappointed because the Native Americans in Virginia were powerful enough to frustrate the attempts to use them as forced laborers. It was at that point that the British turned to British laborers under the indentured servitude system. The status of indentured white servants and indentured Africans was very similar. They were both, of course, hired for a period of time and, and both could, could become free. And, and let's also say that both were treated real bad. To be an indentured servant in this country meant that uh, you, uh, you literally didn't have any rights. In this world, there's not much practical difference in terms of the oppression that they face. In some measure, that equality is an equality uh, because uh, these people can't be treated worse. By 1640, indentured servants were essential to the profits of Virginia tobacco farmers. Their labor made tobacco the colony's most profitable export. Three men on the same farm, doing the same labor, being harassed, and oppressed on a comparable level to the point that these three men chose to flee their owner. John Punch, Victor, and James Gregory crossed the Virginia border into southern Maryland. Days later, they were captured and returned. In the colony's highest court, it was said that Hugh Gwynne's servants caused him considerable loss and prejudice. I want you to punish them, my lord. You will serve three more years. The two white men are sentenced to simply a number of years added to their indentures. For John Punch, the one black among these three men, his fate is infinitely worse. It's servitude for life. For the rest of your life. Oh, now, there's no law that says that John Punch had to have been enslaved for life, but uh, it was clear that 1640 is sort of the turning point, the beginning of the point where Africans are going to be treated differently as opposed to whites who are indentured servants. Rather than distinguishing people because they are unfree, people are being distinguished now because they're black or white. And that whiteness is privileging in ever-increasing and beneficial ways.